Hello, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And welcome to another chatty video, Coffee with Kate. We're hanging out, we're talking about a random subject. Today's subject actually came from an article or the Twitter threads that spawned after the article that my co-writer sent me. The original source was from The Independent, an opinion piece stating it's an insult to authors not to finish each and every book you start. I actually think the opinion piece itself, for as short as it is, is really interesting and a cool thing to discuss. I think the title is a little bit more clickbaity than the actual substance, so it goes. Now, as someone who's an author, as someone who's a writer, I have feelings about this. As someone who's very DNF friendly, I have feelings about this. <laughs> I do want to say that I think by and large this opinion piece got a little bit roasted on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter anymore, so I rely on my co-writer to send me a lot of this. But I thought just the concept of it was really interesting. As DNFing in the book world seems kind of like not quite as divisive as being a dog earer, which I am, but it's definitely one of those things where some people never DNF books, some people only DNF books once they get halfway through, or some people like Mark Billingham, who said that readers should throw a book across the room angrily if it hasn't gripped them in the first 20 pages, which I think that and other comments is really what spawned this opinion piece. Now I want to go through some of the points brought up in the opinion piece, but also I want to talk about what does a reader owe a writer? Or do you owe anything to the author if you bought their book? Or if you just checked their book out from the library? Or if a friend loaned you the book, right? What kind of relationship is there? There's been a lot of talk before about what writers owe readers, which is in theory a compelling story should in theory tie up loose ends. There's a lot of talk about writers who take a long time between books and series and do they owe their readers to finish that series? George R. R. Martin, Matt Rothfuss. In fact, readers' behavior um, for other authors has been shaped by, by these writers. Like some readers will no longer start a series unless the entire series is completed because they've been burned before. So there is, I don't think you can deny that there's a relationship. Let's posit that first. Hmm. But I guess my question is how deep is the relationship? What is the give and take? But let's go ahead and discuss what Rupert Hoxley said. Let us debate the question. Is it an insult to authors to not finish each and every book you start? This sounds so ridiculous to me. <laughs> As a reader, I DNF books all the time. And in fact, 20 pages might be about where I do it. Maybe I give it 30 pages, but like, there are so many wonderful books in the world. There are so many wonderful books on my shelves. There are so many wonderful books that I go to the library and I see new books every day. And this is what a wonderful problem to have. So then why, if the book's not gripping me, would I, would I do it? And now sometimes if I heard a book is really wonderful, I'll continue. I've continued reading for book club picks when really I wish I would have DNF'd. Like I, there are more books that I'm happy I DNF'd. <laughs> that I did not waste any more time over than the opposite being true. My biggest gripe of the entire article is actually his main point, which reads, reading is for the most part a private pursuit. It's unlikely many of us would seriously change our habits based on the advice of others. Whatever works for you, I suppose. Still, I found the discussion this week dispiriting and dare I say it, a bit childish. I guess I'm just so over <laughs> people using the argument that something is childish and therefore sort of dismissing it, especially within the reading world, which really seems to latch onto that. The idea that we read simply to be entertained as an easy form of escapism seems to underpin all the arguments for giving up on a book. I couldn't get into it, it didn't grip me, too slow, but entertainment surely isn't the only reason why people read or indeed why authors write. Reading should challenge and confound us. It should take us into the minds and lives of those we don't like or find hard to understand. This may not always be gripping, but it is often rewarding. We owe it to writers to give them a full hearing before passing judgment, and finishing a book is the only way to do this. But as for the rest of his point, I think that something can still be really engaging while challenging you, while confounding you. He brings up how some characters are inherently unlikable and yet you should still keep reading them for the experience and what you'll learn. But that's not why, I don't know, I don't put a book down because of the unlikable characters. Sometimes I put it down because the writing doesn't suit me or I feel like I can see where the book is going and I've already read like three other books like it that I enjoyed more. You know, there's a litany of reasons why people would 
put down a book. He even mentions at one point, form and style can be frustrating too. If a novel is written in an unconventional or fragmented way, it is hardly likely to grip you in the first 20 pages as you grapple to interpret it. But then the veil lifts and the rhythm takes hold. What if the veil doesn't lift? What if the rhythm doesn't take hold? What if it's just to you a bad book? <laughs> he even brings that up and suggests a book that that's happened to him, but he forced his way through it. And was it a waste of his time? possibly. But what I think Rupert's suggesting is that there's a deeper relationship between reader and writer than actually exists. The writer is not owed anyone reading their book. They're not owed the reader even picking up their book. The book ends up being a product that you're selling. And while it is certainly art as well, and there's a way we interact with art that may differ than like the pillow and blanket and plushy that I'm sitting next to. How I use the product once it's in my possession is up to me, right? How I interact with a piece of art on the wall is up to me. In fact, I don't think there's a lot of good that goes with forcing someone to continue reading something that they don't want to read. <laughs> I will point to almost every book in high school that I DNF'd because I just didn't like being forced to read, being told what I should read. And I get, you know, why the curriculum is structured in that way. But as someone who loves reading, it really bothered me. <laughs> the books I've read for book clubs that I haven't enjoyed, but I wanted to be able to talk to people with, uh, you know, those are potentially hours spent reading that book only to grow more and more frustrated. <laughs> and that kind of frustration and active dislike it just seems just kind of silly to me. I know some people hate read, but this is a concept that I've personally never gotten. So I may well be missing something, but I also don't hate watch. For instance, I don't begrudge anyone who clicked on this video and has already clicked away because it was not entertaining enough for them or not what they were expecting or they hated the sound of my voice or whatever else. You know, there's plenty of things. I don't, I, viewers don't owe me the entire watching of this video, <laughs> right? Like I, I, I just don't get it, I guess. And I don't think it's insulting either. <laughs> now I wanna move on to a couple of the Twitter hot takes that my co-writer sent me before we discuss what does a reader owe a writer, if anything. Rachel Hawkins says, everyone has dunked on this sufficiently, but my extra spicy take is that people who feel this way aren't real readers because people who truly read a lot and read widely are better at prioritizing their time. This thinking is a result of needing to look smart, not actually reading. Also, any passionate reader recognizes that gut feeling of not for me versus not for me right now and handles it accordingly. And I love this response by bookgallo one to Lady Hawkins, which is, this is the kind of thing that makes people not like reading. No one says you watched five Five minutes of a show sports ball game therefore you must watch all episode games because if not you were disrespectful people should be free to find the things they like and discard those they don't eric smith said if you're worried about insulting authors by not finishing their book don't worry most of our friends and family haven't even opened the free copy we gave them meredith ireland as an author who debuted within the last two years i want to say i'm not offended if you don't finish my book i'm thrilled you bought it if you want to use it to prop open the door and allow in a nice fall breeze or weigh down some papers on your desk awesome so then what do readers owe the writers if not finishing the book all i can really think of is don't tag them in negative reviews. I think negative reviews are so helpful for other readers, but they're not meant for the author, right? So you don't need to tag them. Makes sense. This has long been discussed many times before. In fact, while I think actually reviewing the book is really helpful. And I think telling friends and family, if you liked it is really helpful. If you've bought it, if you've checked it out from the library, you're already helping the author. This is the exchange and the relationship you've promised. You have given money or used your library, which has given money to the author in exchange for the entertainment, the art, the good, whatever, right? I don't know that there's anything further that you need from the consumer end, except don't be an asshole, which is a good general rule of thumb. <laughs> Mm. But I do really want to hear what you think. I want to know if you DNF books. I want to know if that has changed as you've written more yourself. Has it not changed at all? I want to know what you think the writer owes the reader, but also what the reader owes the writer. I am fascinated by this weird non relationship. <laughs> I feel like I talked myself out of thinking that there was a relationship at all. I don't know. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I have a little bit more coffee left, but, but this is it. I need to go because it is time for a little Hocus Pocus, which I will be watching tonight. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye. <laughs> That's a lot of school beverage.